you've been forgotten like a picture that's faded with age and time after time you ran after me when i was still running away you never give up on me no you never give up on me oh i'm weak you are strong you told me i still belong no you never you never give up on me and time after time i've used your grace as a way to do what i I've taken for granted prayers that you answered. I've never been all I could be, but you are holding out your hand, and now I clearly see you never give up on me. No, you never give up on. Strong, you told me I still belong. No, you never, you never give up on me. You've always erased all my mistakes. You lift me up when I'm down. And through all the ages, your love never changes. You welcome me just as I am. You never give up on me. No, you never give up on me. Oh, I'm weak, you were strong. You told me I still belong. No, you never, you never give up. Oh, in my journey here 
see the light of lights hope. of hope. And I can see, I can see him on his throne.
watching over there. It's building beauty rare. I'm going, I'm going home, home to live again. Well, when they lay me in the grave, don't you wait for me. tonight. Appreciate the invitation to come and share what the Lord has laid on our heart. I want to give a praise report, first of all, and uh, I, we was here last Sunday night for your dedication of your renovation that you all did, uh, and, or last Sunday morning. That was last Sunday morning. And uh, But anyway, we request a prayer for, for Bethany. She looked like uh, I mean, we had been praying, but we didn't have, I don't, we just, Mark and I were talking about it. That, that girl's bound for surgery. I mean, it's, the MRI showed several bulging discs, and one of them was pressing against the nerve, causing numbness in her leg. But the great thing was, she wasn't in pain. So, uh, but anyway, she was anointed at, at her church, and then we requested prayer here, so everyone was praying for her. And for you that didn't see on Facebook, some of you, I know, saw her praise report. But uh, she went to, the, went to the surgeon and uh, Friday evening, and he said, no surgery. No surgery. And he could, not, he could not believe. He said, after I looked at your MRI report, he, uh, well, I'd, she had, you know, sent up uh, to, had called for an appointment and he said, when I saw the MRI, I asked that you be brought up ASAP. So uh, he, was, he said, I was expecting you to be in severe pain and that you needed help right away. And she said, well, I'm not. So uh, we just thank the Lord. He said, give it time. Time should take care of it. So um, I think God took care of it. Amen. And uh, I just appreciate your prayers. And then I, I have a request. Um, Kim knows about this individual. Um, but there's a lady that goes to, a family that goes to Bethany's church, and the lady's name is Amy, Amy Shepherd, and she has a brother, and I'm not sure what her maiden name uh, is, but she has a brother, 53 years old, that was just diagnosed with cancer, and uh, upon further testing and all, it's pretty much through his entire body. He has just been given a few weeks or months. He is a Christian, but... This, this man, I, I just, uh, he, he has, to look at his life, it's a perfect picture, physically, materially, and everything. He is a manager of a, of a Honda plant. Uh, he has two sons. One is a pharmacist. One is a GPA. Um, he exercises. He is an addict to exercise and eating healthy. Took care of his body. Did everything right. And now he's facing death in a few weeks. Uh, we, we don't know, do we, from one day to the next what we're going to face. But that family is absolutely devastated. He has an elderly father who won't eat, won't sleep. Won't, he's just absolutely grieving himself to death. So remember that family. Amy was at the altar this morning and was, had a prayer cloth anointed for him. And they're trusting God. And... Uh, they, they first of all told him that there was no, no, even no need for him to seek any treatment, but he is going to some other places and seeing if there is an option of some treatment to extend his life. But uh, we, God's able to heal. Amen. God is able to heal. There, there's no doubt in my mind. Uh, whatever God's will is for that family, I know God will be there to take care of him. If you have your Bibles tonight... His name is Jim, by the way, so remember him in your prayers if you think about it. I know you have a lot to pray for. We all have a lot to pray for, and, uh, but if you think of that, remember him in prayer and his family. Joshua chapter 14, 
And we're going to start reading with verse 6. Chapter 14 of Joshua, verse 6, reading down through verse 13. Uh, this is such a familiar passage of Scripture. Very familiar. Uh, people that read the Bible, this is one of your favorites. It is mine. And uh, I wouldn't even begin to know how many messages have been preached from this. And uh, there, there aren't any songs that come to mind, but I'm sure there's been songwriters that's been inspired by this Scripture because uh, it is very familiar and a very good scripture. So, pardon? I want this mountain. Want this mountain. That's right. That, I forgot about that song. Uh, anyway, let's start reading tonight. In chapter 14 of Joshua, verse 6. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua and Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh the Kenizzite said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I when Moses, a servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to espy out the land, and I brought him word again as it was in mine heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. Notice that phrase because it's mentioned six times in this scripture. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years. So that makes him eighty-five, right? Ever, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. As yet, I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now. For war, both to go out and to come in. Now therefore, give me this mountain, <clears throat> whereof the Lord spake in that day. For thou heardest in that day how the Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave unto Caleb the son of Jephunneh the Hebron for an inheritance. How many of you believe tonight that God's got a lot more for us? Uh, there's probably some who, who uh, might believe it, but they don't want any more. And that's, that's the honest truth. That's the sad fact. And, and, you know, if you don't want more of God... I don't mean this disrespectful, but you're the loser because God has so much more for us. And you've heard it said over and over again by many preachers, by your pastors, and so many who have said we have just scratched the surface of what God has for us. Some weeks ago, before Mark had this last six spell, Randy Abbott, who pastors um, Chapel of Hope up in Greenfield, he's family to a lot of us here and a lot of you know him, uh, he and his family went on vacation, and they called Mark and asked him if he would fill in on Sunday morning uh, for him while he went on vacation. And so Mark did. And uh, Randy has uh, wonderful singers in his church. He has wonderful singers, has good, good groups, trios, soloists, and they have a good choir. They have very many in their choir, but... For they make up with that low number in, in the voices because they are good. They have a good singing up there. And that morning, the choir sang a song. Mark and I had never heard it, but it immediately caught our attention. And as it did, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and put a thought on my heart simply from the title of this message. And I just really couldn't wait to start studying it. The title is simply this, my only option is climb. My only option is climb. Option simply means my only choice. My only choice. The only thing I can possibly do is just climb. Now, Brian preaches a message about mountain climbing, and he did a lot of research about how to, how to properly climb a mountain, how you train, how you get ready, so on and so forth. And he took all of that 
and applied it spiritually and came up with a good message. Now, I'm not going in that direction tonight. I'm not, I'm not going there. But I'm just going to say this from things I heard in his message and things that we just know for ourselves. Mountain climbing is no easy feat. Mountain climbing is very, very difficult. And I don't care if you're trained or you're not trained. It would be very hard. I've never climbed a literal mountain. Now, the closest I've ever come is those hills around here on the farm. And that was when I was little. And I was, uh, only reason why I did it then was not for pleasure at all. Because I don't like bugs and I don't like being in the woods. And I'm afraid what might, I might find there. But Grandpa Adkins, bless his heart. May he rest in peace tonight. <laughs> But he would get us grandkids, and he'd say, we're going to go on an adventure. We're going to go in the woods, and we're going to hunt for ginseng, and we're going to do all this stuff. So we did that. But that's the closest I've come to any height is, is to there. But I'm, I'm assuming, I know spiritually this is true, and I'm assuming for those who do do mountain climbing and get to the top, the triumph, the victory, how one must feel when they get to the top of the mountain. The reward is absolutely great. But now let's get into the Word of God. Let's look at some in the Bible who literally had to climb a mountain. Abraham, in order to make the surrender to God and be willing to offer up his son Isaac, he had to climb Mountain Moriah. Now, God may ask you and I to climb that mountain spiritually. He may require of you and I a surrender of something. And the biggest thing we have to surrender is ourselves. He may ask us to be willing to sacrifice some things that we hold dear, that we love with all of our heart, and we may have to climb a spiritual Moriah. Don't you agree? In order for Moses to receive the call from God... And see the miracle of the burning bush that was not consumed. He had, to, he had to climb Mount Horeb. And you and I may have to climb that mountain as well. When we receive a spatial call from God. And having received a spatial call from God. To preach the gospel. Let me tell you something. That is a mountain to climb. But all the reward at the top. When you surrender to God's will and answer the call, there is nothing like it. In order for Moses to receive the law from God, to get the Ten Commandments for the children of Israel, he had to climb Mount Sinai. Sometimes you and I may have to climb a spiritual Mount Sinai to get a word from God, to get alone with God, to get to that place where God can speak to us through his word and let us know what we need at that particular time. Elijah had, had to climb Mount Carmel because he had to prove to the heathens and to the idol worshiping of, of Baal, he had to prove to them that God was the one true living God. We've got a battle on our hands today, church. We've got a nation that does not want God in it. The majority don't. We've got a nation that don't want to mention the name Jesus Christ in reverence and in the, in the person that he really is. We've got people that want to remove prayer, everything. We have got a battle on our hands, but let's not fail to stand up and prove to them who the one true living God is. It's our God tonight. He's the one and only. He has been and is and will forever be the only God. In order for Christ... To lay down his life for the sins of the world, he had to climb Mount Calvary. And all of us have said this. All of us have said this. We hate that he had to give his life. We hate that he had to go through the suffering and the struggle of the crucifixion. But if it hadn't been, where would we be today? In order for the disciples to behold the glory when Jesus was transfigured before them, Peter, James, and John, the inner circle, went with him up on the mountain. He, uh, Herman, and there on that mountain,
and Jesus was transfigured before him and they saw his glory and Peter said it's so great let's just build three tabernacles and stay here have you ever climbed one of those mountains? You had some last Sunday, last Sunday morning, and last Sunday night. You had some of those experiences where probably you did not want to leave from the presence of God that you felt here in this place. We have those places. In order for Jesus to ascend into the heaven, he had to climb Mount Olivet. And from there he ascended and went back to the Father. And those standing by said, Why men of Jerusalem stand ye gazing into the heaven? Uh, because this same Jesus that you see go away will come again as ye have seen him go. Moses had to climb to Mount Pisgah in order to view the promised land. Did he not? He wasn't allowed to go over, but he was allowed to view Thank God it's going to be a reality someday, people, Amen. when we begin not only to view the promised land, but we get to inherit it. It's going to be great. These had to climb mountains. These had to climb mountains in their life to accomplish what God asked them to do. Now, in order to reach that next spiritual level in your life, in order to move forward, in order to obtain all that God has for us, our only option is to climb. And it's up to us whether we want to do it or not. Now let's go to Caleb. There's three things from these verses I read you tonight that I want to share with you. And number one is this. His only option was to climb if he wanted to inherit the promise. He wouldn't have got it any other way, Tom. He wouldn't have got it any other way except to climb that mountain and claim what God had promised to him. No doubt this is the way Caleb felt. I don't want you to hear me on this. I don't want to be a borderline believer. I want to go all the way and receive the inheritance that God has for me. There's too many people just accepting a borderline experience, just a borderline dose from God when they've got a mountain that they can have if they'll just go claim it. But you gotta climb it. We should feel the same way. Now, we've got an inheritance tonight. And Paul mentioned this in Acts 20, 32. He said, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. He also said in Colossians 1, 12, Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers, what? Of the inheritance of the saints in light. It takes work. It's not for sissies. It takes sacrifice. And not everyone is up for that commitment. But some who aren't want what others have. They would like to have that freedom. <laughs> Because they can see it in the lives of, of some of their, of their fellow saints. They would like to have that anointing, but they don't want to pay the price. That's the bottom line. I'm sorry. I mean, no, I'm not sorry. But I'm just giving you the word tonight, and I'll not apologize for it. God, the Holy Spirit, check me there. Some are content just to be the borderline, but here I have no, they have no desire to reach a spiritual height. And you know, there's a lot of reasons for that. But I think the one big reason is you're just scared to death, afraid to see what God's going to do with you and what you might have to do. Oh, for pity's sake, don't you realize tonight that what God calls you to do and what he asks of you, he's going to be there to enable you to do what he asks you to do. Who are we serving anyway? Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me get in here now. Here's a good example. 
Joshua was handing out the inheritances to the tribes. They had crossed. They was getting their inheritance. And Joshua and Caleb was the only two that got over there because the others had disbelieved. So he's given them their inheritance. Everything was going fine until he handed to Joseph what their inheritance was to the tribe of Joseph. Not Joseph himself, but to the tribe of Joseph. He gave them their inheritance and they said, we don't have enough room. We are a great people. Well, they were great in number and they had grown since the last census was taken. But so had other six other tribes grown as well. But they kind of said this with a, one commentator said, now the Bible don't say this, this is what one commentator said. He said, they, he said I kind of pick up the hint that they were saying that with pride. We're so great, we need more room. <laughs> you know what Joshua told them to do? This is my own words, I'm paraphrasing. This is what he told him. Then go up in the hill country and cut the wood down and get more room. We're not going to hand it to you. Do you all remember back a few years ago? It's been, I don't know how long ago it was. And I probably don't remember this. You might remember because of the visual aid I brought. But God gave me a message on this thought about cutting down the timber, clearing the timber and make it, and taking what belongs to you, getting more of what God has for you. I called your pastor because he, ever since he's been big enough to hold a chainsaw, he has cut trees. So I contacted him and I said, Tom, give me some information about, uh, about cutting down the forest and what steps you go through. See if I could apply it spiritually, you know. And if you'll remember, I either brought an axe or a machete or I don't know what I brought, but I brought a weapon that night that would cut. <laughs> and you that, have, you that have heard and seen me preach know I get very physical, and I get wild, and I get crazy, and you all were terrified <laughs> that I was going to let that thing slip and scalp you one and for all, all the way back through. But everybody lived. Nobody got hurt. But this is what he told him. Go cut the timber down and make some room for yourself. Oh, but then they have armed chariots. They have a strong army. We just can't do it. You ever heard that? We can't do it. He told him what to do, Monty. He said, go up and cut the wood. Cut it down. You've got all the room you need. But you're going to have to go work for it a little bit. We're not going to hand it to you. There's iron chariots up there. You know what I imagine Joshua said to him? Well, for pity's sake, who are you serving anyway? Amen. The God you have is more powerful and bigger than that army and those iron chariots that that army has. I say praise the Lord tonight, church. Whatever it is that we need to get from God, he is able to defeat the enemy and make a way for us tonight. So, Caleb said, if I want the promised inheritance, if I want what God's got for me, my only option is climb. And number two, if my only option is climb, then how am I going to do it? How am I going to do it? Well, the answer is right here. Caleb had it. He said, my strength... <laughs> My strength is the same at 85 as it was 40 years ago. Why? Only God. I want to tell you, God empowers us. He strengthens us to accomplish those mountain climbs and to reach the top and take what belongs to us. Six times it is mentioned. I told you earlier when I read the scripture, six times it is mentioned that Caleb wholly followed after the Lord. That's not H-O-L-Y, that's W-H-O-L-L-Y. And that simply means completely and entirely. 
If you completely and entirely serve the Lord, you are just going to automatically have such a relationship with Him that you're going to draw strength from Him. You're going to be reading your words. You're going to be praying. You're going to be walking in obedience. And because of that, praise God, you'll have all of the strength that you need. God is our strength. He is our help. He is the one that can lift us up, uh, my friend, and take us to the top to achieve what God has for us tonight. Praise his holy name. Isaiah 41 10, fear not for I am with thee. Be not dismayed for I am thy God. Preachers listen up. Here's your three point message. Number one, I will strengthen thee. Yea, number two, I will help thee. Yea, number three, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Strengthen, help, and uphold. This is what he said he would do, but did you catch the word strengthen? Isaiah 40, 31, but they that wait upon the Lord shall what? Renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 40, 29. He, oh, he giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. I'm giving you the word, people. I'm giving you the word tonight. Isaiah 40, or, excuse me, Isaiah yeah, 40, 29. He giveth power. Yes, I already read that, didn't I? Okay, and I, I think I got them all in. Yeah, I thought I skipped one, but I got them. All from the word of God that we will draw our strength for him. How do you think your pastors preach every week? How do you think these preachers go out and preach to these other churches? How do you think your singers and teachers, missionary department, how do you think they all do what they do? God, his strength, his help. Praise his holy name. Listen to the course of this song. My only option is climb. Listen to the course. My only option is strength in the Lord. He'll give me power as he has before. <laughs> I can't, this is the line you want to get. I can't be defeated. It's not God's design. <laughs> it's not his plan. It's not his will that we be defeated. Do you get that? And the last, the last line says, it's not, it's not God's design. My only option is climb. Well, Caleb had to climb to get his inheritance. He climbed through his strength in God. And number three, and lastly, my only option to climb is not just for my benefit, but for the benefit of future generations. That was covered as well as you're ever going to hear it last Sunday morning. And I'm certainly not trying to add to that. So don't, please don't misunderstand me. But I read to you from these verses tonight, and I'll let me read again verse 9. Surely the land wherever thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever. <laughs> I think Caleb's daring faith and courage rubbed off on his kids, upon his daughter and upon his son-in-law. Do you know why? Because his son-in-law had courage and faith to become a judge in the land. And his daughter had the courage and faith. <laughs> she said, paraphrasing, Dad, you claimed a mountain. Now I want to claim something. I want you to give me a field. Go and read it. I want you to give me a field. And he gave her a field. She thought, well, I got that. She came back and said, 
I want springs of water to irrigate the field. And he gave her that. Oh, that God just gave me something. The Holy Spirit just gave me something. When we get something, we want more. We want more. She asked for the land, but then after she got it, oh, I'm going to ask for a little bit more. Give me some springs of water to irrigate the land. And she got it. It rubbed off on him. Yes. I'm still crazy, aren't I? I'm still wild and crazy, but don't feel sorry for me because it's the best feeling in the whole world. You can have your opinions, but if they're negative, keep them to yourself. And I don't mean that smart lady. That's just a simple fact. That's just the truth. What if Caleb... I'm closing. What if Caleb had been a borderline believer? Would his family have done what they did? More than likely not. There are some exceptions, I'm sure. But more than likely not. This next generation must have a positive influence. And they must see some examples of daring faith and courage and of people moving forward and getting all that God has for them. That's exactly what Matthew was doing tonight. He was digging out, cleaning out the wells for God to fill up, to take him to a higher place. Isn't that right? Now, this is one thing here. I want to read to you two things, and I'm going to read them to you because I want you to get them, and I want to get it right. Caleb's example of faith was more valuable to his family than the property he claimed for them. Now, the older generation must provide for the next generation, not just materially, but more importantly, spiritually. Now, you agree with that, don't you? And I agree you know, I agree with everything that your pastor said last Sunday morning. I think God expects us to, as it lieth within our power and our finances, to make God's house the best that we can do. I do. I don't think it has to be something that we can't worship in comfortably. Where, you know, you're afraid to move, afraid you'll crack something. I, I don't think, you know, I don't think it should be like that. You don't necessarily have to have crystal chandeliers. But you need to have a nice, clean place. Amen. And as, as it depreciates, then it needs a facelift. And that's exactly what you did. I believe in all of that. But the messages you hear and the things you see demonstrated, that's more valuable than these beautiful padded seats. Amen. That's what's going to hold you when the world's on fire. This will this, this will dissolve. This will fade away. But what you got in here, what you got with God, is what's going to stand. He wholly followed after the Lord. And God took him to the mountain to claim his inheritance. My only option, now just get it in your head tonight, my only option is climb. And the Holy Spirit and God will be right by your side to give you exactly what you want and what you need. I believe that with all of my heart. Believe that with all of my heart. And I want to say this. I'm closing. And, I, and I, I'm, just, I, I'm, I'm around this individual. I'm using my daughter here as an example. And I don't do it in a... I'm not, I don't want to do it in a a uh, carnal bragging. But I, I'm around her, and I want to use her as an example. Mark and I have, were talking about this, in fact, this evening. Bethany is at a spiritual level in her life right now that I have never, ever seen in her life, ever. And I'll tell you where it has come from. It's her prayer closet. She's got a prayer closet off of the kitchen. 
she gets up early before work and in the summer before the day starts and has her devotions with God. She gets in the spirit and testifies and acts a little bit like her mother. Now, you talk about making me happy. That makes me happy. God is using her. She's getting speaking engagements. She went to Chillicothe, the 3CU church on High Street. They said they had you up there, Caleb. She went up there on a Wednesday night and spoke to them about the sword, which is the word of God. And I mean, it was a great message. She's going to be going this Saturday night to speak at the Christian Baptist Back to School Youth Rally. God is opening up doors. She had a mountain to climb, and buddy, she fought tooth and toenail to get to where she's got, but she's got there. It can happen. God can change your life and turn you around to a place that you never thought existed. And I'm sorry if that sounded really carnal. I'm sorry if that sounded carnal to you. I apologize. But I've seen it. I'm not around you all a lot anymore. But I've seen it in her life. And I know what can happen if we climb and claim what God's got for us. I know that without a shadow of a doubt. Just blesses me to death. Well, I have said enough. So, Pastor, somebody come on. Take over the service. You can give an invitation and whatever it is you want to do. Thank you for having me tonight. I appreciate the invitation. Wonderful. Thank you. Bless you.